Well, things are about to dry out and heat up <laughs> very shortly. March has been an intensely crazy month. And as I record this on March the 16th, the Pisces confusion energy with all this energy squaring um, Mars, the ruler of Aries, um, has just been crazy. It's chaotic. We don't know what's coming out where and the weather's been wild. I did predict in my March video that it was going to be a wild month. Well, things are going to start to shift. So in this video, I'm going to look uh, first quickly at uh, Mercury's journey through Aries uh, because it's a very quick journey. So I want to give you a quick overview of that. And then I want to look at the equinox chart the, for the sun entering Aries. The very next day, we have an Aries new moon. And I've also done an Aries new moon video, which you can uh, link to at the end, or you can find it amongst my videos um, under, um, or if you're listening on the audio, you can find it on uh, the podcast as well, the Aries New Moon. But this one's going to be special, and we're going to look at the Aries Ingress chart for uh, Washington, D.C. And if I get time, I'm maybe going to look at London too, because the Aries um, Ingress chart uh, really kind of gives the um, vibe for the following three months um, in the place where it's set. So you can also do one for your own as well, but um, I don't have time to look at every city in the globe, of course. <laughs> so let's dive into Mercury, Mercury in Aries. Mercury's moving into the sign of Aries on March the 19th, so the day before the equinox. And um, and it will only be there until April the 3rd. So it's a real whistle stop tour because uh, Mercury is moving really fast, um, having just as we speak, having its uh, a superior conjunction with the sun where it disappears behind the sun. Mercury is always moving at real speed when it does that. And it will start to slow down um, as it moves into Taurus because it's going to head towards another retrograde. But the speed through um, the time through Aries is really short. So what's that? That's only 12, uh, 15 days, two weeks and a day of Mars in Aries. And it's not going to all be plain sailing. So let's have a quick look at the astrology of that. And and then I'll tell you about the major um, the major aspects for Mercury's journey through. So Mercury enters the sign of Aries on March the nineteenth, Sunday, March the nineteenth, at twelve twenty four a.m. Eastern time. And so you can adjust for your time zones. Now, you would think that that would be like Mars, Mercury is our mind, our communication, it's the news. Um, you think that would be all very Aries, like drive forward, clarity, all that kind of thing. However, Mercury is combust the sun. It's still under the beams of the sun, which means Mercury's burned out and being reborn behind the sun. And Mercury will not actually emerge from under those beams of the sun until March the 27th. Uh, so we've got the first eight days of Mercury moving through Aries. It, the mind is still burned out. The, st the news is still burned out. Our thoughts are not clear because they're kind of dazzled by the light of the of the sun. Um, when the sun moves into Aries the next day, there may be a little bit more clarity, but we've got to think that Mercury, from our perspective, is still combust and a little bit slippery. So bear that in mind. Now, the first aspect we get when uh, Mercury moves into the sign of Aries. So Mercury is going to be conjunct Chiron. Okay. So, yeah, so that's the 26th, the day before Mercury um, emerges from under the sun. I'm only looking at the very major aspects. So if you think about this, oh, let's have a look. 
Oh, I hadn't quite got that right. Bear with me. But it is the 26th still. Mercury is going to emerge um, out from under the beams of the sun the day after this. But Mercury first meets Chiron while still just kind of dupping under the beams of the sun, just maybe kind of emerging a little bit. And it's going to kind of hit our inner shaman. We've been in this deep underworld journey for most of March with all this intense Piscean energy. And now we've got this Aries energy of rebirth, but it's not going to pick up right away. All right. It's not going to be like a horse out of a gate, to be quite honest. So um, so that's the first major aspect. On the 26th, Merc Mercury conjunct Chiron. There may be some news about some collective wounds, but also kind of like, this is me, I stepping into being my inner healer. And that's what I truly believe that we can be through the use of con connection with the cosmos. And um, I use shamanic work, uh, meditation does it too, but it's connecting in with your own inner healer. And in Aries, it's very much about I am and who I be. So think about that. Then the other aspect, the next one is Mercury is going to conjunct expansive Jupiter. Now that's when things will really pick up because Mercury is now just um, out from under the beams of the sun, no longer combust. Mercury and Jupiter will meet at 18 degrees and 13 minutes of the sign of Aries on March the 28th, and there could be some big news then. If you think about the energy of it, Mercury's been combust behind the sun. Um, you know, things have been slippery, not clear, unclear. This could be the day. And uh, you think of Jupiter being kind of the law, really, natural law, and judges and so on. Maybe that's the day, March 28th, when we're going to get some big news about indictments and things. Fingers crossed. Because I was just listening to a video that said on the Georgia um, grand jury that there could be 12 people charged uh, with what they've found. And the jurors are speaking out, which means they've been allowed to speak out in Georgia. Um, and they're saying, you know, what they found out was so big. And so disturbing that some days they would go and sit in their cars and cry at the end of the day. So, um, you know, the the wheels of justice uh, move slowly, but I'm recording this on uh, March the 16th. This is only 12 days from me recording this. So maybe that's the day that we'll get some big news released. Um, then uh, Mars will conjunct, Ves sorry, Mercury will conjunct Vesta. And Vesta is our inner flame. So at a personal level, this could mean you kind of really thinking about your inner flame, what you stand for, what you're committed to. Uh, but Vesta is also the state. So coming two days after the conjunction with Jupiter, really, it's all kind of all happening together. Hmm, that's going to be interesting, too. And then um, Mars, Mer Mars, Mercury, Sorry, Mercury is still under the beams of the sun and combust, so my tongue is all like, blah, blah. Uh, Mercury will conjunct Eris on March the 31st, okay? And Eris is the table shaker and the revealer of corruption of the elites. And, um, and that's going to be an interesting day as well. And then that's it. Mercury moves into Taurus on April the 3rd. So it's a whistle stop tour, but I think it's going to be quite big. If you think about March the 27th, Mercury emerging, kind of blinking from under the beams of the sun, ready to give the news, ready to communicate, ready to start something new. That's going to be quite astounding. OK, so now <coughs> let's look at the sun's ingress into Aries which is on March the 20th. And we're just going to look at this chart then. And remember, this chart will kind of set the vibe for um, 
for the for about three months coming till the um, summer solstice, particularly or the solstice, depending which hemisphere you're in. Now, this one is looking at the chart for um, for Washington, D.C. So this is really for the U.S. And I'm first thing I notice is that on the ingress, which is incidentally International Astrology Day, so yay astrology on <laughs> on the equinox, uh, we have a Virgo rising, which is Mercury ruled, and we have a Gemini mid heaven, which is Mercury ruled, and Mercury is under the beams of the sun still combust, and this is in the seventh house of um, open enemies. Um, but it's also kind of um, marketing and how we compromise ourselves for others. I think um, this energy is really interesting, especially with Mercury ruling this, the news and contracts and communication and all that kind of thing. There could be some negotiations going on that we don't see um, that could emerge within the next three months. And that kind of ties in with what I was saying about Mercury and Aries. Well, another thing I find really interesting, though, in this chart is that um, Centaur Nessus, who I've been studying, is, um, I'm going to say angular, right on the descendant on the House of Open Enemies. And the moon is generally the people in mundane astrology. And Nessus and the moon are conjunct in Pisces, and Nessus reveals abuses of power. And Nessus is at 16 degrees, which is the degree that we had a Virgo, um, uh, uh, sorry, Pisces. Yeah, a Virgo, sorry, Virgo full moon two weeks before this, just about. And so um, I really think you know, this kind of indicates that in the next three months, there's going to be some big um, re revelations about abuses of power. And it's kind of a bit hidden at first on the Aries ingress, but um, but it's going to come out as the um, as this as the um, season progresses. We've also got all this airy stuff in the eighth house, which is really kind of a very hidden place. But it's also about uh, power and manipulation, the eighth house and things that have been deeply hidden. And um, remember what I just said about Mercury going through all this conjunct Chiron, conjunct Jupiter, conjunct Vesta, conjunct Eris. Hmm. Things are going to get interesting. OK. Finally, as well, we have the North Node moving back into that eighth house, which is also going to re reveal things. I think in the US, I think some of these investigations and so on that are um, ongoing are going to be revealed in the next three months, um, very much so. OK, um, I'm not going to go into all kinds of detail, but I think news is going to be big because we have a Mercury ruled ascendant and a Mercury ruled midheaven coming up. Uh, one other thing, though, that we do have is um, Mars at 27 degrees, Gemini, um, unleashed from the cage of his retrograde, but still in Gemini, still at peak declination, out of bounds, conjunct asteroid chaos. So I think things are still going to be chaotic. Um, we've also got Venus conjunct the North Node. That can be a bit tricky with finances, especially in the sign of Taurus, because that is about money and things. So I can see the stock market being wild, at least, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and truths kind of revealed about unstable institutions with um, with Uranus in the sign of Taurus in the ninth house. So it's really kind of a big season ahead. All right. So I'm going to now um, edit this and we're going to have a look at London. I'm sorry, I do not have time to look at every <laughs> every city in the world. So we're going to go to London and and get to the Aries ingress. Yeah. OK, so London, UK. You have Scorpio rising with um, the south node 
um, in Scorpio on right on the ascendant and the north node over here of Venus. I think there's going to be some big kind of financial news going on for you um, in a big way. And again, this south node is kind of about revealing different kinds of abuses of power. Um, and you've got uh, Leo on the midheaven, which is kind of interesting because we get you're going to get a new king um, crowned during this quarter that this is launching. Um, and Leo being the sign of royalty. Um, however, looking at the rest of this chart, um, I think there's going to be some chaos around shared resources coming up as well. Come uh, through this. Aries is in the fifth house, which is also royalty. This is all screaming to uh, kind of Charlie boy taking taking the throne or being officially crowned in the throne. And Mercury's combust there, though, as well. So what is he hiding? What is he going to say? Um, also, the moon and Nessus that I talked about with um, the USA is in the fifth house of royalty. I, I kind of think I've always thought that uh, Charles is a secret reformer. What is he going to come out with once he's really seated in power? That's going to be interesting as well, I think. And it's going to shake up your um, international relations in a very different way, I think, coming in to the new year, the astrological new year. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview. Um, Aries is very fast moving, so I'm not going to go into huge detail, but I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a um, of an overview of what's coming on. Um, one thing um, I will mention for the UK is um, that this is definitely in terms of leadership and um, and um, who rules the country. Things are going to come out. OK, um, and they may not always be pleasant. And I think finances um, and shared contractual finances with some other countries like the e well like the eu and so on and so forth could be a little bit volatile as well okay and chaotic and um so you know that some deals are still being struck uh, some of the fallout from brexit is still coming through and that's going to be a bit of a highlight as well all righty so I hope you enjoyed this. This is a different thing for me. Um, I've always kind of looked at the ingress chart, but not applied it as much to um, uh, mundane astrology or the astrology of countries. So I hope, uh, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of a guide of what you've got coming up. So until next time, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and enjoy my Aries outfit that I bought. One when Jupiter was conjunct Venus in um in the sign of Aries, I looked at my closet. I was like, I need more red, and so I bought this sweater. And uh, so there you go. This is my Aries treat. Much love. I will see you next time.